10 conversational narc grenades. There are 10 words or phrases that we regularly use and throw into a conversation in order to exert control, derail you, gain fuel, and a host of other manipulative methods. Here are the 10. One, you never. This is the precursor to a criticism of how you do not do something for me. It is a twin explosive assault against you because not only do I tell you that you are failing me by not doing something for me, I also choose something that you actually do carry out. By suggesting that you no longer do a particular act or say a certain thing when you actually do so, I intend to leave you speechless with exasperation and confused as to just how I can say such a thing. You will be stunned by such a blatant contradiction and this will result in your emotional response coming to the fore rather than a reasoned one. All the better fuel for us. Number two, you always. The flip side of number one and likely to be tossed in your direction not longer after the first knock grenade. The allegation of you always will be followed by some put down and criticism highlighting a behavioural trait of yours which we deem unsatisfactory. Once again, we will actually highlight something that you do not do in order to perplex you. You will defend yourself against this scandalous accusation and once again erupt in an emotional manner. 3. I'm sick of you controlling me. This is thrown at you in order to project our own rampant control of you. This is also used to deflect any criticism of us when you chastise us for our behaviour. Any attempt from you to point out the error of our ways, or even to try to help us in some way, will be met with this response. We do believe that you are trying to control us by trying to break our own control of you, and we cannot allow this to happen. It is through our control that we gain what we want from you, and therefore any threat to this must be met with something that will knock you off balance. Accusing you of the very thing that we are doing will cause such astonishment and consternation that our aim is fulfilled. Number four, my ex wouldn't do this. A narc grenade of triangulation, and who better to do it with than your predecessor? By implying that your predecessor has some form of superiority to you, after all the smearing of her name we did when we first ensnared you, not only will you be taken aback by this sudden volte face, you will also be mightily offended at being compared to someone who we apparently hated so much. Drawing you down to her apparent level always brings forth a reaction from you. Number five, my ex would do it. Another flip side grenade, whereby we are seeking to coerce you to do something for us, something which you are evidently reluctant to do. You have reservations, and no doubt with good reason. But that also does not matter to us. You are our extension, and therefore you ought to be complying with our wishes without hesitation or refusal. By triangulating you again with she who went before you, we are threatening you that you are inferior to her, and raising the prospect that you will soon be dispensed with if you do not do what we want. Number six, I love you, but I don't like you right now. This carefully crafted knock grenade will shatter you as it appears as a compliment before ripping your heart out as you struggle to comprehend what we have just said. Surely if we love you, then we must also like you. What do we mean when we say this? It creates confusion and will have you trying to persuade us to both love and like you. What we mean when we lob this grenade towards you is, you say you love me, but you will not do what I want. 7. If you loved me. We know that you are a love devotee, a passionate supporter and believer in the concept of love, and we use this as a grenade to bring about compliance. We know that you take pride in your integrity and decency, and therefore you have standards to always uphold. By suggesting that your failure to act in the manner we want 
or that your disagreeing with us is somehow representative of you loving us less, we are challenging what you stand for. This will always force you to react by stating your case, reacting in an emotional fashion, and ultimately doing what we want in order to prove that you do indeed love us. 8. You are overreacting. A favourite to make you react even more. You take matters seriously, and there are many things that we shall do which will cause you to respond in a serious and concerned fashion. By using this grenade, we belittle you and cause the issue to be about your reaction rather than what we have actually done. It acts as a brilliant way to deflect discussion and dissection of our behaviour, and instead causes you to try to prove that you are not overreacting, which will invariably actually heighten your response. 9. I can't deal with this right now. Our grenade that is thrown in order to provide us with an escape route from any crisis or situation that requires us to be either accountable or supportive. We do neither, and we want to keep it this way. We will invent some other reason which means that we have to depart, or that you have to deal with this situation as we hurl the grenade, leaving you to catch it and deal with the subsequent explosion as we walk away, free from involvement, responsibility and culpability. 10. I don't remember. The blast from this grenade is used to eradicate the problem that you are facing us with. Whether it is an accusation that we have failed to do something, or evidence of misbehaviour, this grenade is a fail-safe way of enabling us to escape the problem. Often it will be used even when it is blatantly clear that we can remember, making your flabbergasted reaction all the more satisfying. There may be irrefutable evidence that we know and can remember, but this never stops us from hurling this grenade at you and making good our escape from your attempt to blame us.